Psalm chapter 9, verse 1 to 4. I will praise you, O Lord, with my whole heart. I will tell of all your marvelous works. I will be glad and rejoice in you. I will sing praises to your name, O Most High. When my enemies turn back, they shall fall and perish at your presence. For you have maintained my right and my cause. You sat on the throne judging in righteousness. David declared that he will praise the Lord with his whole heart. Will you do the same? Will you praise God with everything that is within you? David then goes on to say that he will tell all of God's marvellous works. Now will you also do the same? Will you testify that God has been and that God is good to you? Will you speak of his marvellous works? Will you testify of his grace, preservation, love and forgiveness? 2 Corinthians chapter 12 from verse 8 says, Concerning this thing, I pleaded with the Lord three times that it might depart from me. And he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. If ever there was anything to be joyful in, it's the fact that the Lord gave us this promise, that His grace is sufficient, it's adequate, it's enough for you and me, and also the Lord God Almighty said that His strength is made perfect in weakness. His strength shines. His strength is demonstrated when we are weak. And it's because of these reasons that we should also say, I will praise you, O Lord, with my whole heart. I will tell of your marvellous works. I will be glad and rejoice in you. I will sing praise to your name, O Most High. And with that understanding, let us pray. Lord Jesus, I thank you for your grace and tender mercies. You are a God who loves your children, who protects his children. You preserve me from being destroyed by the devil. You surround me with your grace and favour, even though I do not deserve it. I trust in you because you are a God who is greater than my past. You are greater than my pain and failures. As I face each new day, I rejoice, not because everything in my life is always good, but because I have a God who is always good. You are good all the time, Lord. Through my highs and lows, you have been good to me, Jesus. As a sinner, I gave you countless reasons not to love me, reasons to walk away, and yet you still loved me. You still offered me mercy, your word tells me that as far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. And so I bless your holy name, King Jesus. I will not forget all that you do for me. Your word says, for as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward those who fear him. There is no one else capable of loving like you, Lord. 
there is none who can even compare and offer the grace that you have placed over my life. I will praise you, O Lord, with my whole heart. I will tell of your marvellous works. I will be glad and rejoice in you. I will sing praise to your name, because as the Bible reminds me, you are a God who forgives all of my iniquities. You heal all my diseases. You redeem my life from destruction, and you crown me with your loving kindness and tender mercies. I thank you for such amazing grace. It's your grace, Lord, that gives me strength in weakness. It's because of your grace that I am able to live today. You are a just and holy God, and so I will testify that my God has never failed me. My God will never disappoint. My Lord and Saviour is extraordinary, and I will place my trust in his wonderful hands. I will not worry, I will not doubt, because my God can do all things. Lord, my heart overflows with praise and gratitude for all of your goodness. You are a God who has solutions to every problem and every challenge that I might ever face. It's because of your might, your grace and favour, that I am confident to rise above every difficulty, every challenge, knowing that you have given me the power to overcome through the blood of Jesus. Today I declare your word, in Psalm 100, a psalm of thanksgiving that says, Make a joyful shout to the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing, knowing that the Lord, he is God. It is he who made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gate with thanksgiving and into his court with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting and his truth endures to all generations. May you be glorified, Lord. Help me to continuously have faith in you, to trust you, even when I don't understand. Teach me to praise you even in the midst of uncertainty. I will trust that you know exactly what I need and when I need it, and you will provide for me in your perfect timing. I will forever seek you, Lord, in all that I do. Now as I lay my requests before you today, that your hand may always be upon my life. I will trust your plan and your timing. You are a God who hears prayers. When I am in pain, you, Lord, can feel my pain. You know when I am feeling overwhelmed and exhausted. And even then, I will hold on to the measure of grace that you have given me. A measure of grace that is sufficient for me to be able to face whatever comes my way. I thank you, Lord Jesus, for listening to this prayer. May you be glorified and may your name be magnified. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, I approach your throne of grace today 
with sincere gratitude for all that you have done in my life. I am thankful, I am filled with hope and joy because I can call on the name that is above every name. I can call on you Lord Jesus, my way maker and I can call you friend. I stand back and I am amazed that you are concerned about my well-being and my state of mind. I thank you for your care and for your affection and Lord today I simply want to praise you. I stand in awe of your mighty power. My mind cannot even begin to understand your unrivaled greatness. And even though I am limited, even though I am fragile, I am grateful that I have you to lean on, the rock of all ages. I have you to run to, I have you King Jesus to confide in and to unload all of my concerns, all of my burdens and problems. And my prayer Lord is that you strengthen my faith. I know that you are in control. I know that you are a sovereign God. So I ask that when my faith is weak, will you give me the gentle reassurance that my heart needs to continue to stand and believe, to continue to walk by faith and not by sight. Help me during the times that I try to move forward with confidence, to move forward with faith, but doubt and uncertainty tries to overwhelm me. May you be my helping hand during those times. May you help me and guard me to not allow the spirit of fear to consume me. As I come to you today in prayer, I seek your forgiveness. May you forgive me for my moments of weakness when I have taken my eyes off your word and off your promises. I pray that you will strengthen my faith so that I can be the type of Christian who is able to stand in the face of challenges and in the face of opposition with the understanding that I am not alone. May I stand with the knowledge, with the understanding that I have a God who always wins, a God who promised to never leave me and to never abandon me. May you give me an understanding that is rooted in your word so that I may have the strength to stand on the assurance of your promises. Empower me Holy Spirit so that I can demonstrate faith like Daniel as I encounter my daily trials. Lord just as Daniel faced the threat of the lion's den, he could have hidden as he prayed. He could have been crushed by the spirit of fear. However he did not run away or turn his back on you. Instead he stood for you, he stood in faith knowing that you would deliver him. And I too desire to have that level of confidence within you, a confidence so strong that as I am threatened on every side and even if challenges arise in every form, I want the courage to stand and remain faithful to you. Your word tells me in John 16 verse 33, it says, These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation. But be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. God you are greater than all the challenges that I will ever face. And this is why I can trust you. I pray that you work on my faith 
and remind me that I can also be an overcomer through you. And even as tribulations come, may you remove my doubts and fears, plant my faith in your supreme power, and help me to find comfort in the fact that he who is within me is greater than those who are against me. Lord, you tell me in Hebrews 11 verse 6 that without faith it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. I want to live a life that is pleasing in your sight, Lord. I desire to have faith that pleases you. So I ask that if my faith should be shaken because of anything, may you strengthen my resolve to please you. Grant me faith like Paul and Silas, faith that will cause me to praise you through my tribulation, faith that will cause me to praise you in spite of my tribulations. The type of faith that thrives during challenges and overcomes all doubts and fear. Your word tells us that when Paul and Silas were arrested, flogged and imprisoned, in Acts 16 verse 25, the Bible says, but at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone's chains were loosed. I thank you for this word of faith, a story that demonstrates the power of faith. Lord, these men were able to worship you from the inner prison as they stretched their faith beyond their current circumstances and they reached out to you on high. You love to work when such faith is displayed and you did not disappoint Paul and Silas. You broke down the prison walls as you rewarded their faith and so I pray that you inspire me, inspire and strengthen my faith, O mighty God. Fortify my faith, so that I will extend my belief, my hope and trust to you, and allow you also to work mighty miracles throughout my life. Help me to avail myself to be used by you as a testimony of a faith-filled life. Lord, I desire to live a fearless life, and I can only be free from fear as you reinforce my faith. Your word tells me in Romans chapter 8 verse 37, For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Help me to live with eternity in mind. Enable me, Holy Spirit, to live a faith-filled and abundant life, even if that means that sometimes I have to endure trials and persecution. Lord Jesus, I know that I am more than a conqueror through you because you love me. And today I claim an abundant life free from fears and doubt in your holy name. As you strengthen my faith, help me to do my part and stand on your promises to deliver me from all evil and to sustain me through all things. 
I am grateful for your providence in my life and I can rest my confidence in you because you are great and abundant in power. May your will be done Father and I pray that my faith will be pleasing to you. I thank you for hearing this prayer. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ I pray. Amen. Joy is rooted in who the Lord is. And joy is not just a feeling, because feelings will fade. Feelings can be short-lived. And the other thing is that joy is not based on what's going on around you. Joy is rooted, it's embedded in Jesus Christ. And the chapter of Psalm 146 offers a brilliant expression of joy. The Bible reads, Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. While I live, I will praise the Lord. I will sing praises to my God while I have my being. Do not put your trust in princes, nor in a son of man, in whom there is no help. His spirit departs. He returns to his earth. In that very day, his plans perish. Happy is he who has the God of Jacob for his help, whose hope is in the Lord his God, who made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, who keeps truth forever, who executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry, the Lord gives freedom to the prisoners. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord raises those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the strangers. He relieves the fatherless and widow. But the way of the wicked he turns upside down. The Lord shall reign forever. Your God, O Zion, to all generations, praise the Lord. There are so many reasons to have joy in the Lord. We ought to be joyful because there are promises in the Bible directed to you and me Promises that say, surely, goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. We ought to be joyful because the Bible says in Psalm chapter 20, May the Lord answer you in the day of trouble. May the name of the God of Jacob defend you. May he send you help from the sanctuary and strengthen you out of Zion. May he remember all your offerings and accept your burnt sacrifice. May he grant you according to your heart's desire and fulfill all your purpose. You see, joy is the absolute assurance, the conviction and belief that God Almighty is sovereign, meaning that He alone is in control. He controls every fine detail concerning my life. He's in control when I am on top of the mountain, and He's still in control when I am walking through the valley of the shadow of death. Joy can be described as a quiet confidence that knows that ultimately everything is going to be all right. Everything will be okay. Everything will work out for my good. 
because ultimately everything is in God's hands. And so it's with this assurance, it's with this confidence, knowing that God is in the driving seat. It's this belief that leads us to be joyful in all situations and praise God always. And so now, let us pray. My Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, may your name be lifted high above every other name. You are the Alpha and the Omega, the one who holds the keys to life and death in his hands. I praise you today. I rejoice in the fact that you, my Lord, are a bridge over troubled water. Other emotions may be present in my life, but I pray that the joy of the Lord will overrule everything else that I feel. Your word says in Psalm chapter 20 from verse 6, Now I know that the Lord saves his anointed. He will answer him from his holy heaven with the saving strength of his right hand. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God they have bowed down and fallen, but we have risen and stand upright. I rejoice because my Saviour holds all power in his hand. You, Lord, can save me. You, Lord, are the one who listens to all of my petitions, to all of my prayers, and I pray that you will grant me my heart's desire, according to your will. People all over the world place their trust in so many different things. Some do indeed trust in chariots and some in horses, as your word says. But I trust in you, King Jesus. I have joy because you are a God who works in my circumstances for your glory. I rejoice at your promise in Deuteronomy chapter 20 verse 1, which says, when you go to war against your enemies and see horses and chariots and an army greater than yours, do not be afraid of them, because the Lord your God, who brought you up out of Egypt will be with you. I worship you Lord Jesus and I find comfort that you are my defender. Regardless of whether the odds look to be against me, regardless of whether I am outnumbered, I will not be afraid because I will call on the name that is above every other name. I will call on the name of the one true God, Jehovah. A God who has proven time and time again that he is capable of defending, of protecting and leading his children to safety. You did it for Moses as he crossed the Red Sea. You did it throughout the life of Joseph. You protected Daniel and the three Hebrew boys I pray and I believe that you will do it for me also. You will protect me as I hold on to your word that promises me that you will fight for me. I thank you Lord and I praise you for being an almighty keeper and a mighty provider. I pray that my reality will be your goodness. It will be your favour, your love and your grace. I trade my sorrows and weakness for strength and joy in you, Lord. Take away the voids that are in my life, the feelings of emptiness, and make me whole instead. 
may I be satisfied by the treasure that's in your word. I pray for peace that surpasses all understanding, and I declare that that peace is mine through Jesus Christ. I declare that the joy of the Lord is my strength. And I praise you, Lord, for the glorious grace that you have poured out on my life. You are worthy to be adored, worthy to be praised and worshipped. I thank you for hearing this prayer. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Psalm 121 I will lift up my eyes to the hills. From whence comes my help? My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. He will not allow your foot to be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. He shall preserve your soul. The Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth, and even forevermore. This is a chapter with wonderful promises that we need to hold on to. Verse 2 tells us that our aid, our rescue, our help comes from the Lord. Verse 3 tells us that God will not allow your foot to be moved, meaning that he is in control. He is ordering your steps. His word is a light to your path. So while the ground may just be sinking sand, you and I can stand on the solid rock that is Christ Jesus. And if that wasn't enough, the Bible goes on to tell us that he who keeps you will not slumber nor sleep, meaning that a God who has no limits, a God who doesn't need to rest like us as humans, he always has his eye on you, whether it's deep in the night or right in the middle of the day, his watchful eye is always on us. Whether we're asleep or full of energy, God will be watching over us. And if we look at verse number 5, it says, The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. This is a definitive declaration. The Lord is your keeper. He is our custodian as believers. He is our guard, our overseer, our protector. He keeps us from evil. He keeps us from being destroyed by the devil. He keeps us by sending his angels to have charge over us. And when the Bible describes him as the shade to your right hand, that has everything to do with his proximity. He is as close to us as a shadow. He is as near to us as our own shadows. And as we end the chapter, the word preserve is repeatedly used on three occasions. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. He shall preserve your soul. The Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in. And why is that? Why are we repeatedly told 
that we will be preserved. I believe it is so that we don't forget. We don't forget the fact that we will be preserved when we come face to face with any opposition. We need to be of the belief and standing that evil may come, but God will preserve me. Disease may come, but the Lord will preserve me. Anxiety may try and attack me, but the Lord will preserve me. And so with this understanding of what Psalm 121 is all about, let us pray for the protection of the Lord to be upon our lives each and every day. Dear Lord, you are a mighty God, a God who loves me and has proven his love for me in so many ways. I thank you, I praise you for your many promises that provide me with hope and a sense of security. In your word, you have promised me to keep me from all harm, to keep me from loneliness, from evil, from my enemies. There is nothing that can touch me without it first going through you, Lord, my rock and my shield. And Lord Jesus, I declare that you are my refuge. You are my strength and a help that is readily available during times of distress. I have peace today knowing that I am under the protective care of a God who neither sleeps nor slumbers. You are a God who cares for his own and you do so in miraculous ways. There are plenty of examples of your supernatural power, Lord, that I can find in the Bible, examples that strengthen my faith, examples that build my belief in you as an all-powerful God. And although in my life I may not physically be in a den full of lions, I pray that you will protect me each time that I set my foot outside my home. Each time that I am travelling, may you be my protection, Lord. Although I may not need a miracle such as splitting the sea that's in front of me, I pray that you will make a way for me to navigate through the storms of life. Make a way for me and bring peace to the storms that I face, at my job or within my family, even with my friends, may you shield and protect me. Be my rescue, Lord. I may not have the guarantee of a problem-free life, but I do have the guarantee that my help comes from the Lord, the creator of heaven and earth. I invite you, Lord, to be so close to me as I draw closer to you. Just as your word says, the Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. Under the shelter of your presence, there is a peace, there is a stillness, there is a serenity that I can find. And so I ask that may you always be the shade at my right hand. This life is full of many dangers, both physically and spiritually. I pray that you will keep me and preserve me from physical dangers such as illness, injury and accidents. I pray that you will keep me and preserve me from spiritual dangers such as doubt, sin, false teachings and deception. 
Protect me from these threats, Lord Jesus, and preserve my soul. Preserve my going out and my coming in. You are my hiding place, Lord. You will protect me from trouble and surround me with songs of deliverance. You are my keeper, Lord Jesus, the one who watches over me and my family, that as I begin each day, even as I end each day, may I do so while under your divine care and protection. I am relying on your faithfulness, Lord. Help me not to shake, not to stagger or despair in my faith when things are tough or intimidating. Be my sanctuary, Lord Jesus. Even if the storms of life roar, I pray that you will protect and preserve me. I glorify and reverence your name, Lord. Thank you for preserving me from all evil. Thank you for preserving my soul. Thank you for preserving me in my going out and in my coming in, from this time forth and even forevermore. I thank you for hearing this prayer. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Jesus Christ is and should be the King that rules our hearts. He is the only one who can fulfill us, the only one who can satisfy us and make us whole. He can give us everything that we need and He alone is worth pursuing above everything else on this earth. So I encourage you to keep God first and you will lack for nothing. Place Him at the top of your priorities and see that He will transform your life. Give God the throne to your heart and He will change your desires. He will enable you to be truly satisfied in Him. And take a moment to think, what's really important in the grand scheme of things? Because everything on this earth is temporary and fleeting, none of it will last. But God's kingdom, on the other hand, God's kingdom is for all eternity. And it's for that reason that He is the only one worthy of our devotion. He is the only one we should be focused on. No matter what everyone else is doing, keep God first. No matter what season of life you're in, keep God first. Because the treasures of this earth are passing away. All of our earthly pursuits will let us down in the end. So I encourage you to store up your treasures in heaven, where nothing can be destroyed. Jesus said, seek first the kingdom of God, and the rest will be added to you. He will provide for your every need, and that is why we should prioritize Him. And with that understanding, let us pray. Dear Lord, my God and my Saviour, fill me with your love and joy as I earnestly seek you today. Father, I feel the same way as the psalmist who said, as the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, my God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. It's only your presence, Lord Jesus, that can bring transformation in my life. Only your presence can revive and refresh me. Father, I pray that you rekindle my flame for you, so that I can have a strong desire to chase holiness 
and live righteously. I invite your presence, Lord, to remove all of the turmoil and fear that's around me. Remove every doubt and everything that could hinder my relationship with you. May your love and mercy reign. Be my sanctuary, Lord, my place of refuge and safety. Your word in John chapter 7 verse 38 says, He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. I pray, Lord, that you pour out your spirit, pour out your blessings on me and my family. You are the well of eternal life. So I come to you, Lord Jesus, longing to be made new. Your word tells me that the eyes of the Lord search the whole earth in order to strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed to him. Father, when your eyes search the whole earth, when you look to strengthen those whose hearts are committed to you, I pray that you may find my heart full of faith and burning brightly for you. I pray that I may never be too busy for you, May my heart never be too busy to make room for your word and for spending time with you. I pray that my heart may never settle for lesser things, but rather may I constantly seek heavenly things, things from above. I desire to be wrapped in your steadfast love, Lord. I pray that you will visit me Visit me in my home and with my family. I will make room for you in my heart and in my life. So I ask that you make your presence known to me. I will bless your holy name as long as I live. I will lift up my hands and praise only you, Lord. For you are perfect in all your ways. I pray, Lord, that you will lift me up when life tries to pull me down. May you always be my help and comfort. And even as I thank you for your goodness, I want to always run to you first and hold on to you when I need love and the strength to face whatever may come my way. Protect my heart, Lord. My heart belongs only to you, and I want to make sure that there is no room for anything else but you. You are my priority, and I want to place you at the throne of my heart. Help me not to feel crippled by the worries and the cares of this world. Save me from feelings of depression or from drowning in fear and in anxiety. When I am in need of anything, I pray that my heart puts you first, Lord, the only one who can quench my thirst, the only one who can calm my soul. You are good in every way and your love for me is consistent. And so I will let go and let you be God. I give everything to you, all of the struggles in my life, all of my fears and everything that is troubling, I give it to you, Lord. May you form a shield and fortress around my heart and my mind. Protect me from anything that seeks to destroy me. Just as your word says in Isaiah 25 verse 1, I too will praise you and say, O Lord, you are my God. I will exalt you. I will praise your name. For you have done wonderful things. Your counsels of old 
our faithfulness and truth. You, King Jesus, have not just given me life, but you continue to faithfully love me. I praise you because of your abundant and unfailing mercies. I pray that with every breath that I have, and for as long as I am on this earth, may my heart be lifted up in praise. My voice will sing praises to your name and exalt you. My hands will be lifted and surrendered to worship you. You are the rock of my salvation, the solid rock that I stand on. And it's in you that I find comfort, peace, and everything else, whether it be physical, spiritual, or emotional. Thank you, Father. I trust that you have heard my prayer and the petition of my heart. I bless your name, for you alone deserve all of the glory. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. The Hebrew word for peace is shalom, and the basic meaning of the word shalom is wholeness, harmony and well-being in all areas of life. And so real peace is a life that is blessed by the Lord, because only in Him can you be made whole. Only in Him can you find harmony. Real peace is the fullness of a life guarded and protected by God. Real peace is the wholeness that you find when you're living under the grace of God. And so we need to understand that a life lived apart from God a life that is separated from God is a state that would leave you empty and without peace. Only as we live in the presence of God can we be made whole and can we be complete. That's what it means to experience real peace. This is why you and I should always be praying for God's blessing over our lives you and I need to be seeking the Lord's blessing of peace in our homes, over our families. Pray for His presence to be with you, for His smile to be evident in your daily life. And so as we pray, let's ask the Lord for His power, the power that's in the name of Jesus, to be upon you throughout the week. May his presence keep you in perfect peace. In Psalm 29 verse 11, the Bible says, The Lord will give strength to his people. The Lord will bless his people with peace. And so peace is a blessing. So join me in prayer and ask for the peace of God to rest upon your life. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, You are the one who sees and knows all things. I ask that you look down from your heavenly throne and remove everything chaotic, everything unsettling and disturbing within my life. Remove everything that takes away the peace that you have given me. I thank you for offering hope to me in the midst of pain and trials. You are never too busy to help me when I am in need. And even when I face seasons where I am struggling on every side with temptations and trials, seasons where it seems to be one challenge after another, and when I am dealing with adverse situations. I ask that you rescue me, Lord, and grant me your peace, the peace that surpasses all understanding. 
and even when I wrestle with discouraging thoughts. My mind can only have peace when I come to you. My spirit only has peace when I turn to you, O God. I pray that when I feel troubled and confusion tries to take over in my mind, when I feel burdened as I try to keep up with all the demands of this life, I thank you for the comfort that your word brings. Because in John 14 verse 27, your word tells me, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. This peace that you offer surpasses any temporary peace that I could gain from material possessions or even from relationships. This is the peace that I ask for today, Lord Jesus. This peace that will calm my fears and my anxieties. One that will calm the racing of my heart and allow me to place my trust wholly in you. This peace that banishes all worry and care can only come from you, the Prince of Peace. And I thank you that I know you by name, Lord Jesus. With your holy peace, I will be able to press on through any challenges and endure to the end as I lay my burdens and my cares at the foot of the cross and through faith as I receive the assurance that you are in control and that you will take care of everything that burdens me. I know that I can stand strong in this life. I know that I can have peace. You have advised me through your word to seek peace and pursue it and your ears will hear my request. So I will seek your peace Lord. I will pursue your peace daily. This world can be so cruel and disruptive, so I ask that you pull me aside and speak peace into my situations, even as you did on the Sea of Galilee. May you speak the words, peace be still, as you calm the storms raging within and around me. Reach down into the deepest crevices of my mind and take away the doubt, the worries, the fears, take away all of the sadness and mistrust and I ask that you replace it all with your love, replace it with your acceptance, with your courage and more importantly with your all encompassing peace. Lord, even as I seek this inner peace, I also crave your peace in my home. Conflicts are unavoidable as I interact with people, as I interact with friends and even family. But I pray that you will allow peace to reign through your presence. I am reminded by your word that peacemakers are blessed and that they will be called children of God. I pray that the Holy Spirit will help me to do whatever it takes to be a peacemaker because I desire to be called a child of God and so help me to reach the standard of a peacemaker. Let me be the one that speaks words that encourage and uplift others and help me to avoid grievous words that will only stir up anger. Romans 12 verse 18 tells me that if it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. And I believe that through your Holy Spirit, it is possible for me to be at peace with all of the people that I come in contact with. 
and I rely on you now to make this peace a reality in my life. As you grant me peace of mind, I want this to translate to my speech and to my actions, so that they will reflect a knowledge and a peace from the Most High God. Your word in Job chapter 22 verse 21 says, Now acquaint yourself with him, and be at peace, thereby good will come to you. This means that if I agree with you Lord Jesus, if I submit myself and acquaint myself with you, I will be at peace and good will follow me. And so I am happy for this assurance and I pray that you will make me one with you. Forgive me of my sins and cleanse me so that I will align with your will. I ask that you remove everything and anything that will create a divide and prevent me from attaining your peace. I desire to be in harmony with you and so I surrender all at this moment. I let go of everything that will block your eternal peace and I come against every spirit of contention, every spirit of strife and dissension within my mind. I rebuke it within my home and within my space. I now claim your everlasting peace and your presence in my life because I know that you will hear and answer me as I pursue peace. Thank you for hearing this prayer Lord, in Jesus name, Amen.